Happy sunny spring day everyone out there. Welcome to Friday 28th version of Living Life. You know, has this ever happened to you? You give and you give and you give to somebody and when it's time for you to receive, you don't get anything back. I know that when we have experienced these kinds of situations, we're not happy. Well, I remember when I was a young adult and I was moving from dorm to dorm or place to place, um, I used to really help a lot of my friends. And I used to help them, I used to sweat seven, eight hours of helping people move furniture, move beds, and move all kinds of things. And when it came time, I didn't even get jajangmyeon after I helped these people move. But you know, uh, when it came time for me to receive the help, I would call them out and they would say, oh, I have a test, or oh, I have this, I have work, I have so many excuses. And at that time, you don't feel that, that good because you are, your love and your gifts and everything that you have given is not reciprocated. Well, that's kind of what David was feeling in today's episode. Let's go on ahead and check out our devotion and read the text today. First Samuel chapter 25 verses 1 through 13. Now Samuel died, and all Israel assembled and mourned for him. And they buried him at his home in Ramah. Then David moved down into the desert of Maon. A certain man in Maon, who had property there at Carmel, was very wealthy. He had a thousand goats and three thousand sheep, which he was shearing in Carmel. His name was Nabal, and his wife's name was Abigail. She was an intelligent and beautiful woman, but her husband, a Calebite, was surly and mean in his dealings. While David was in the desert, he heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So he sent ten young men and said to them, Go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. Now I hear that it is sheep-shearing time. When your shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them, and the whole time they were at Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. Ask your own servants, and they will tell you. Therefore, be favorable toward my young men, since we come at a festive time. Please give your servants and your son David whatever you can find for them. When David's men arrived, they gave Nabal this message in David's name. Then they waited. Nabal answered David's servants, Who is this David? Who is this son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water, and the meat I have slaughtered from my shears, and give it to men coming from who knows where? David's men turned around and went back. When they arrived, they reported every word. David said to his men, Put on your swords. So they put on their swords, and David put on his. About four hundred men went up with David, while two hundred stayed with the supplies. At this time in Israel history, in 1 Samuel 25, 1-13, Israel has really received a huge loss, and that was the death of Prophet Samuel, Judge Samuel. He was a significant leader of Israel, provided, protected, oversaw, you know, gave word to the nation Israel about the voice of God, what he is thinking, and various things that Samuel did to really bless the nation of Israel. And now that generation has passed away, a new generation of leadership had to come forth, and that was young David. And young David stepped forth to provide that kind of leadership. But as he is stepping forth, in any young leader with limited experience, he needed a lot of help from 
those who had a lot of uh, resources, those in Israel who had many, many things that they could share, and he actually went out and contacted a wealthy man by the name of Nabal. But uh, something happened here um, as he was asking, and let's go into the text real quickly here. As a certain man in man who had property there at Carmel was very wealthy, he had a thousand goats and three thousand sheep, which he was sharing in Carmel. His name was Nabal and his wife's name was Abigail. She was an intelligent and beautiful woman, but her husband was surly and mean in his dealings. He was a Calebite. While David was in the wilderness, he heard that Nabal was shearing sheep, so he sent ten young men and said to them, Go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. So uh, David is here trying to bless this person and ask for a certain favor. Here he says in verse 7, Now I hear that it is sheep shearing time. When your shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them. And the whole time they were at Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. Ask, for, ask your own servants, and they will tell you. Therefore be favorable toward my men, since we come at a festive time. Please give your servants and your son David whatever you can find for them. When David's men arrived, they gave Nabal this message in David's name. Then they waited. So definitely, David had a need. His men had a need. They, had, they needed food. They needed covering. They needed all kinds of things as David and his soldiers provided protection for Nabal and other Israelites that were in the area. In verse 10, this is the kicker. Nabal answered David's servants, Who is this David? Who is the son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water and the meat I have slaughtered for my shares and give it to men coming from who knows where? Now this is one thing that I need to highlight here. Whether you're a Christian or not, or whoever you are, this is a point that we really need to really highlight, especially as Christians. When we receive, we ought to give. There needs to be a reciprocation. We Christians ought to reciprocate, which is give and take, and take and give. This is a very standard act for God's people and God's community. I mean, it's unthinkable for us to just receive and receive and receive and to be selfish. And there's something that we need to really think about. Have we been people where we have received and we have not given? You know, um, one thing about being a Christian, I really do believe, is we need to be more and more like Jesus. And one thing about Jesus was he was very aware of people's needs. He was actually looking out to service people. He was looking out to provide for people's needs. And you know, here, David, as a leader of Israel, expressed a certain need, and there was no need that was met. You know, um, there's this one uh, application that I can g uh, give you guys right now, a certain illustration that I can give. You know, there are pastors these days, especially second generation pastors, who are asking their congregation members, Please, there's one request that I ask of you guys as church members. Please come to worship on time. I'm sure you've heard that from your pastors and many people have uh, heard many of these requ requests from the pastors. Pastors have been going out to you and they have been blessing you. They have been going and doing chinbang, which is visitation. They have been buying you food. They have been doing all kinds of things to meet your needs. And the pastors, they ask a few things and oftentimes we're not able to reciprocate. You know, brothers and sisters, for us, whether it is a relationship between pastors, relationship between father and mothers, or our family members, or our brothers and sisters in Christ, or even our neighbors, we need to be people who reciprocate, which is give and take, take and give. This is something that is very crucial to our Christian faith. But not only that, we see here, uh, there are people, there are Christians, even though they receive, they have attitudes like Nabal. Nabal here answers David's servants, who is this David? Of course, Nabal knows who this David is. David just slaughtered a Goliath, a giant. Of course, the news about David went all over these, these regions. He knew who David was. But what was going on here? There was no respect or fear of God's servant. There was no respect. No fear of the leader that God has placed. And for anyone who does not fear the, the leaders that God has established, 
there's going to be something coming up for them. And it's not going to be something pretty. God disciplines those who do not fear those who He has established. Yes, people are weak. And we are all, you know, we are all filled with flaws. And we have weaknesses. Even leaders do so as well. But regardless, if God has established a leader, we absolutely need to respect them. We really need to um, have a certain kind of um, humility towards them. You know, I remember one time when uh, I was trying to counsel a, a brother um, that was a, a congregation member at church, and he came through and he was talking about a certain kind of abusive relationship that he had. Um, the, the girlfriend of his was very abusive verbally, physically, and yet he still had compassion for her. But as I was hearing him out and praying for this brother, I sensed in my heart, hey, maybe it's time for you guys to really, you know, take a break. Or you need to separate yourself. She's doing too much harm, too much damage. And in your relationship, it doesn't seem like it's going to be uh, going towards Christ. Um, as I was giving him these kinds of advices and various things that he, uh, that he needs to do, uh, in my opinion, as I was being prayerful, he rejected every one of those things. And he said, Pastor, you know, I understand, I respect you, and I really, you know, like what you're saying, but ultimately in the end, I'm going to have to make my own decisions. And I said, hey, you know, it's your life. It's between you and the Lord. And, you know, needless to say, he got married, and soon after, you know, he was divorced. And after that, he had a whole lot of things he had to deal with after that messy divorce. Brothers and sisters, we need to respect those the Lord has appointed. And when the Lord appoints someone, then we absolutely need to be supportive. God bless you. So as we have come into this devotion, there's a couple of things that I really want to highlight and challenge you guys to do today in respect to application. First and foremost, let's be people, let's be Christians who reciprocate, which is give and take. You know, if we receive, we need to be able to give. If we are giving, we need to be able to uh, receive. And this is something that is just basic, foundational, fundamental to our Christian faith. So. Therefore, if somebody asks you to do something, and I know it's sometimes very difficult, I know sometimes it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time, and we don't have a lot of effort and time these days, and we don't have a lot of money, and we don't want to give. But even then, always think to yourself, has this person have blessed me? And most of the time, he probably has, or she probably has. And in what ways can I bless this person? Let's not really just be so selfish and consumed with our own needs and our own desires, but let's really be willing to be people who are willing to also give and also receive. So secondly, I also want to uh, challenge you guys to take seriously God's servants' requests and advice. If a pastor comes to you and he highlights something, or if a leader comes to you and he highlights a certain sin or he highlights a certain circumstance or situation, if a servant comes up to you and highlights a request, let's not turn the other ear. Let's not turn the other way. Let's really think about what that person's request is because this request might not just be coming from him. It actually might be coming from the Almighty God. And through the pastor, you're able to have this immense and great opportunity to serve God and advance God's kingdom. So with that, I want to bless you today. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you so much for this time when we're able to come to see, Lord God, the heart of Christ and the, the, the ability to build a community is through reciprocation, giving and receiving. Help us, Lord God Almighty, to be Christians who are not just self-consumed and selfish, but help us, Lord God Almighty, to request Help us, Lord God Almighty, to be able to receive and to be giving. Lord God, through that, may love arise and may, may relationships build. We also ask, Lord God Almighty, that when we hear the requests of pastors and leaders and, and spiritual figures, Lord, instead of turning the other year, instead of turning the other way, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would allow us to have sensitivity towards what you are doing through this person and the kind of needs that we have or the leaders have and be able, Lord God, to give whatever we have, Lord God, for the advantage of your kingdom and for your glory. So we thank you for this time. We pray, Lord God, that this lesson and this devotion would be embedded in our minds and in our thoughts. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.